So let's get into the Michigan affidavits here. Um, I know this is boring for some people, I understand, uh, but uh, I want to make sure that you understand exactly what is in this document, what matters, kind of some of these things are tough to read. Yeah. So first off, this was introduced by um, quite the dish, mm. Kaylee McEnany, uh, yesterday. Uh, here you go. This is her announcing it. We keep hearing the drumbeat of where is the evidence? Right here, Sean, 234 pages of sworn affidavits. These are real people, real allegation, signed with notaries. It's 234, 235 pages of sworn affidavits. Uh, I want to go through what I think are the most notable. Uh, f first off, uh, Half Asian Bill, can you explain to people what a sworn affidavit is and why yeah. it matters? Why it's not sure. just, ah, I think this election is bad. And right. so there are two different systems. You have the state and the federal. At the federal level, uh, the penalties are wide ranging depending on the circumstance, but you could generally have about up to five years in federal prison. And that's for, perjury. so another, yeah, perjury applies to sworn right, affidavits exactly. just like being under oath in court. It does. I mean, when you are making an under oath statement in writing in an affidavit, it is the equivalent of sitting on the stand with a judge there yeah. and making a statement, again, under right, oath. Yeah. So in the state of Michigan, which is where these affidavits are from, they actually have even more strict penalties. It can be up to 15 years, and it's a felony. So wow. you would have to believe that these, to believe that these affidavits are false, you would have to believe that someone was willing to give up not only more than a decade, potentially, of right. their own freedom, but also all the other things that go along with being a felon right. and the rights that you lose. Yeah, and you don't, you don't want to be Michigan's next Ilhan Omar. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, Rashida Tlaib. Yeah. The point is, their affidavits, yeah. their hands on the front. These Do affidavits the are uh, very detailed as to what yeah. these people saw taking place. So let me give you one here. Um, this is from page 17. The PDF is available to everyone. We'll have the link up here. Uh, on page 17, someone said that there were batches of ballots run through the ballot machine as many as five times. This is a direct quote. Ooh. At approximately 4.50 a.m., I witnessed a man spraying a chemical on a ballot machine. He then placed 27 ballots into the machine, and I noticed tape on the top of the ballot where a ballot number would normally be. Throughout the night, I witnessed what? him insert these, na these same 27 ballots at least five times. What? Legal or not, half Asian Bill? Sounds sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> nice yes. edge. And yeah. So here's the other part is, so people will say, oh, well, you know, the people who are signing it have no idea. They're just being told to sign this stuff. But actually suborning perjury, so going out and procuring perjury is perjury itself like it's right. also within the perjury statute as a crime here's the thing even if you ask for someone to make a false statement and they don't even make the false statement that's, that's punishable crime, yeah. right as wow. a felony well that's so, what i was getting into like where these things came the, the from whole, like there are the entire crimes everywhere, if that's process true. of it yeah. is made that has penalties that yeah. are involved you by the way let's all, go to cnn really quickly yeah. they're saying biden leads trump by more than five million yeah. votes yeah. nationwide yeah. well yeah if you ran them five times <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh. running the votes five times is not a mundane detail michael here's another one <laughs> Uh, this can be found, again, on the PDF. I want you all to read it. It'd probably take you a couple of hours on page 25, page 116, page 122, page 138, page 158, page 185. We have over six eyewitnesses testifying that ballots not in the voter database were just entered using a fake birth date of 1 1 Oh, wow. wow. Why would, it's just a terrible day. To six so separate obvious. witnesses. <laughs> again, check up all yeah. those pages. Uh, uh, this is and this is also interestingly up. enough. This is an excuse that's often used when we talked about dead voters going. Sure. Well, we just, uh, just sometimes they just enter in uh, the, the 1900 as a birthday. That's also not a legitimate <laughs> <Yeah>. vote <laughs> if it doesn't match the birth date of the person in wow. question. You're not supposed to correct it this on your what, own because there's one person here who said that their son voted who's yeah. dead twice. Mm. Now all of the local news said that that had been disproven, but they didn't actually provide sources to it being disproven. What right. I had read was they said, well, sometimes if they're part of a new township that's created, they'll just give him like a birthday, like 1900. That's also an illegal yeah, vote. Exactly. <laughs> what? Uh, fact check. He actually only voted once. Right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That was their fact check. Uh, we have a new town. This We're just going to hand out birth dates now. And, and so yeah. here's the thing. It's like there were some examples where, um, you know, they, the birth date was illegible. They put a... a like a placeholder birth date in there of 1900, sure. and then they go back and they follow those up. And so even if, I mean, this is the entire problem I have with anyone going, no, there's no fraud at all. There's no irregularities. We, we shouldn't look at any of this. Just crown Biden and move on. Right. Is there are legitimate irregularities that the yeah. system is already set to review. Right. So we're not saying, hey, do an extraordinary review. Don't do anything that's abnormal. Canvas the districts, look at the votes, check the ballots, check the things that are irregular, yeah. and, and let 
the chips fall where they By the way, that's important. You just said canvas the districts. This is something I want everyone to know. It's in Georgia, for example. And keep in mind, too, the Georgia Secretary of State, this isn't anyone involved, even if they're a Republican, they don't want to say, yeah, I was involved in the most incompetent voting <laughs> process that has yeah, ever exactly, taken place, yeah. even if it's not scandal. So they're not necessarily going to be looking as aggressively as possible, regardless of political affiliation, because it reflects badly on them as well if they didn't catch it. But this is something that was overlooked, and I would say even on our show, we didn't have enough time. In Georgia, people just think, oh, it's just a recount. Explain to people what the canvassing is, the recount, how that's different, a manual recount, and why it could change things dramatically and catch fraud. Because it's not just going, all right, recounting, and there might be different. When you go to the different different states, (laughs) before they can certify, they have to do canvassing. And people are going, I can't believe they're yeah. asking for this canvassing. I don't know. We've only been doing canvassing our entire nation, like right. the entire <laughs> history of certified votes. Again, not every state has it. Every state does it a little bit differently. All we're saying is do the process you normally do. And in an election where it's yeah. not that close, no one pays attention. But just because you didn't know canvassing happens and that canvassing is required and right. vote certification is happening and reviewing the irregularities and checking to make sure they're right doesn't mean that that hasn't already That's been the process. I think this yeah. comes down to if people believe that this is legitimate or not. For example, just because you didn't know that canvassing happens just because you didn't know for example like well, i think that vote should count but he wasn't born in 1900 why well, well so well that's illegal well, i didn't know that it doesn't matter this is from page 37 uh regarding mail-in voting uh, poll watchers observed mail-in ballots being logged even when they had no signature or weren't a registered voter. Again, you can find this in the PDF on page 37. We have seen this happening uh, across, or many sworn affidavits across the country. Again, all of this is just Michigan. There are also numbers coming in that there are a disproportional number of ballots that just had Biden and Harris, and yeah. I can't verify this, but it hasn't Fishy. really largely been disputed, where it's just Biden and Harris and not the rest of the ticket. Nothing else voted Which down. is very, very rare. Weird. And now all of a sudden you have ballots yeah. accepted, mail-in ballots, at 30 times the rate yeah. Yeah, of exactly. any other election. Yeah. Unbelievable. Because any signature is good enough. Think about that for a second. All of these things, and then something that is statistically observable, no one can dispute this whatsoever, mail-in ballots in the year, the first time they were unrequested, accepted at 30 times the rate. Hmm. Rejection rate was 1% (laughs) is what it used to be. Now it's like 0.03 something percent. Think about Those add up. Over 100,000 votes, a couple million votes. Those aren't just, those aren't, that's not a rounding error. That's winning a state. This is from page 107. A poll watcher saw poll workers duplicating ballots to incorrect precincts uh, in order to run through two ballots for Uh one person. And uh, they said that they observed this repeatedly about 20 to 30 times. So of all the different allegations, Mm -hmm. this is one of the ones that I think is uh, is a very much, like there's no, there's no innocent explanation for that. Right. If they saw what they saw, which, and I realize they've signed and said that this is what they saw. Um, but look, having worked in law, you see people who everyone will see the same scene and remember things a little bit differently right, yeah. or there's some explanation. But that's one of the ones where it's really hard to think of how could there be an explanation? You saw the ballot. It had a precinct. You saw another ballot. It had the same person with the same votes, but with a different precinct. And then they both get run through. Right. Right. There's no there's no legitimate explanation for that. And it's one of the examples that we have to look to get to the bottom of. And here's one other point. Yeah. Let's say that the presidential election does doesn't change. Let's say that the swing states, the battleground states, they are what they are, and Trump doesn't end up winning. There's still a lot of other ballots that matter. We're coming yeah. into a 2021 redistricting cycle. Right. The state legislatures are the ones that determine that. So knowing that the val- the ballots for those less less popular uh, of candidates or less popular races, uh, yeah. races is really, really important. Es- it's- especially when you've already had people who conceded, and then right. they're like, yeah. oh, by the way, oh, you won by a thousand. He's like, oh, you're bullshitting. Ah. Think about yeah. this. For a second, how would you not want to investigate an election where you had a 6,000 vote slip yeah. just to flip? And they go, well, we caught it, so the system works. Well, hold on a second. You caught it in one district and you're claiming it works. I would prefer that it didn't happen at all. Seems it's an yeah. oversight that 6,000 yeah. votes were miscounted for the wrong guy entirely. And we also have another in Michigan, a Republican who conceded. And then they found out actually you won by a thousand votes, which in that district is a lot. Yeah, that's exactly. a significant margin. This happened just just those two examples. Wouldn't that warrant an investigation of every vote in the state of Michigan? Uh, this is page one seventy two. Um, a poll watcher examined a box of ballots and found sixty percent or more had the same signature. Hmm. <laughs> what? That's totally normal. again. We need to investigate this, what? but this is a sworn affidavit. Right. That, that comes I mean, from someone in Michigan. That's something that hand counting with supervision will find. 
Exactly. You would think That's so. why they don't want it. And, and this is a question that I did have for you, uh, half Asian lawyer Bill. Um, how many of these things, if you do a hand count, can be found versus not? So, for example, this is one you can find if they all have the same signatures. Right. But if uh, some of these, uh, you know, secretive, secret ballots have been destroyed, like there are some things that could be covered up afterward. Yeah. Right. Right. So one of the hardest ones are ballots that don't actually make it into the system. So right. if they never got received and that's, uh, you know, if there are ballot boxes or drop offs and they just don't get collected or they get dumped or they get sorted before they're taken in, mm -hmm. it's really hard because you don't have anything in the counting, right? The counting presumes... Yeah that you already have. But there's not really anything right. you can do about that but at the this stage. The one thing to be clear, it really only takes one or two precincts per state to change it. So people yeah. think it yeah. has to be widespread across the state. No, no Wayne no. County is enough. In Pennsylvania, especially yep. when you have some states that are 20,000 votes or Wisconsin, it can be one or two precincts. So we need to be clear yeah. about that. Allegheny You're not just talking about Pittsburgh, every yeah. individual's home. These th these ballots are collected in basically what are giant uh, ballot farms, effectively, right? Yeah. And then if it's covered up in Bristol board and they don't let anyone in, then well, okay, well, now you know that you're screwed. Watch Good Morning Mug Club live every Monday through Thursday at 10:15 Eastern.